Ladies and gentlemen, a 7 1 center from Clemson, number 30, Ree Rollins. Hey, Magic fans, welcome to the latest Magic Player History episode on the career of Wayne Rollins, better known as Tree Rollins. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can learn the story of every Magic player who ever suited up for the franchise. Wayne Rollins went to high school in Cordell, and it was there that a classmate stated that he looked like one of the trees at the front of the school, and the nickname stuck as Rollins was forever known as Tree from then onward. After high school, Rollins played a four-year college career at Clemson before being drafted 14th overall by the Atlanta Hawks in the 1977 NBA Draft. The 7'1 tree carved out a role as one of the era's best shot blockers, leading the league in blocks in 1982-83, averaging 4.3 per game. Across 11 seasons in Atlanta, tree blocked 2,283 shots and is still the franchise's all-time leader. Rollins hit free agency in 1988, and signed with the Cleveland Cavaliers, playing two seasons there before signing on with the Pistons for the 1990-91 season. After a two-year stint with the Rockets, Rollins was undecided on whether or not to continue to pursue a playing career. Orlando Magic assistant coach Brian Hill, who had been an assistant in Atlanta during Rollins' final two seasons there, had tried to convince Tree the previous season to move into coaching. In July, Hill replaced Matt Gukas as Orlando Magic's head coach, and he went back to Rollins to once again try to convince him to join the coaching ranks. This time, Rollins agreed and became the first African-American coach in Orlando Magic history. It was thought that Rollins would use his 16 years of NBA experience to mentor Shaquille O'Neal, but Rollins, even at 38 years of age, still had the competitive fire of an NBA player, so his coaching style included working with O'Neal on the court. In the preseason, O'Neal sprained his ankle, and Coach Hill looked at Rollins as a possible option to step in and play spot minutes. From then on, Rollins decided to keep himself in playing shape, just in case. In early January, backup centre Greg Kite tore his calf muscle, and with Larry Kristoviak also out injured, Magic needed to look beyond their third-string centre, Keith Tower, for productivity. Rollins was once again discussed as a possibility. After holding up well in a full practice, he signed on for a 10-day contract with the Magic and debuted in a win over his former team, playing 8 minutes and scoring 2 points and blocking a shot against Houston. Over the course of his 10-day contract, Rollins didn't miss a shot, he blocked 3 and he had only 1 turnover in 40 total minutes of play. Rollins was offered a second 10-day contract, but as players could only be signed to 2 10-day contracts per season, he had to decide whether it would be best to use up his second contract immediately or save it for later in the season. Rollins, who was still fulfilling his assistant coaching duties while playing, stated that he would do whatever the team needed. But after injuries to Kite and Kristoviak were re-evaluated and determined that they were no closer to returning, Rollins signed on for his second stint and during his second 10-day, Rollins had a game where he scored 7 points in 8 minutes against Miami and then blocked 2 shots in 2 minutes against Washington. Performances which resulted in the Magic signing Tree as a player for the remainder of the season. Tree was proving to be a serviceable backup, scoring 8 points in the 4th quarter against Denver, he blocked 4 shots against New Jersey, and had 8 points, 9 rebounds and a block in 12 minutes against Miami. All wins. It wasn't all smooth sailing though. Rollins was among 3 players fined, along with coach Brian Hill, after a loss to the Warriors in March. Down by a point, Dennis Scott's runner appeared to be goaltended by Chris Webber, but it wasn't called and the Warriors won the game. This game was the night after the Magic's all-in training brawl that's been documented in previous episodes, and perhaps some of the players were still a little bit hot under the collar after the incident, as Rollins, Anthony Hardaway, Nick Anderson and Coach Hill were all fined for berating officials and not leaving the court in a timely manner. Against the Bucks in April, Shaq missed the game with a stomach virus, and Rollins started a game for the first time in over two years. Tree ended up fouling out after playing a season-high 28 minutes, but he scored six points and blocked three shots as the Magic won the game. Rollins was said to provide a calming, big brother-style presence in the locker room, and his play had him rethinking whether he would retire again at the end of the season or not. As the Magic headed to their first ever playoff series against the Indiana Pacers, Rollins was one of the only players on the team with any postseason experience. And in game one, he was called on for 16 minutes of play, with most of that time spent alongside Shaquille O'Neal against Indiana's big front line. Rollins' minutes reduced as the series went on though, and the Magic season ended in a three-game sweep. 
At the end of the season, a few teams contacted Rollins' agent to inquire about his playing availability, but Tree stated that his preference was to remain in Orlando under his dual role of assistant coach and part-time player. But the Magic had three other centres, Greg Kite, Geert Hammink and Keith Tower all vying for the backup centre position. The Magic decided to add new assistant coaches to Brian Hill's staff, and initially it was reported that Rollins would only be brought back as a player this time. But ultimately, Tree was back again on a one-year contract for the 1994-95 season in his dual player-coach role, where he coached players during drills and skills and played along with them in scrimmages. Rollins alternated between the different roles with ease, and veteran player Jeff Turner joked about how Tree mysteriously switched into coach mode whenever it was time to run wind sprints. Rollins battled tendonitis in his left knee, as well as a hamstring issue, and he didn't play in the preseason as the team gave minutes to Keith Tower and Geared Hamming for development. Coach Hill trusted Rollins though, and once Greg Kite was waived, he slotted into position as Shaq's primary backup as the season began, playing 10 minutes on opening night. Rollins' knee was not 100%, and the 39-year-old stopped practicing to try and save himself for the games. He had a pair of three-block games on back-to-back nights in November, before straining his left hamstring shortly afterward. In December, Rollins only got off the bench for six games, with Horace Grant and Anthony Avent playing minutes at backup centre. Rollins missed four straight games as the calendar ticked over to 1995, but then slotted into his backup centre role again, and at the end of the month, was needed to start when O'Neill stepped on glass in his home and missed the game. Rollins had six points and six rebounds as the Magic beat the Bucks. Rollins was said to joke that every time he started, the Magic won, and he kept the trend going later in the month. When O'Neill was ejected in the first quarter of a game against Boston, Tree played 27 minutes and had 8 points, 7 rebounds and 2 blocks as the Magic won big. Shaq was suspended from the following game, a matchup against the Chicago Bulls, and Rollins got the start. Horace Grant was also out, Anthony Avent injured his thigh in the first half, and Jeff Turner fouled out in just 24 minutes. This all led to the 39-year-old Rollins playing 39 minutes, the most that he had played in 7 years while putting up 4 points, 10 rebounds and 3 blocks to help the Magic take a 2 point win. With the Magic on top of the East, Brian Hill was selected to coach the Eastern Conference team at the NBA All-Star Game, and Rollins was able to take his place on the sidelines as an assistant, even though he admitted that he had no idea what assistant coaches did during an All-Star Game. In the stretch run to the playoffs, Larry Kristoviak ate into Rollins' minutes as he finally returned to health, and Rollins suffered a lower back strain against the Kings, missing over two weeks of action. Rollins moved onto the injured list, allowing 26-year-old rookie point guard Darrell Armstrong to make his NBA debut. After some rest, Tree was called on for one final start against Washington in the third last game of the season when O'Neill sat out with knee pain. This time, Rollins went scoreless in 18 minutes of foul trouble and the Magic lost for the first time with him as a starter. The Magic headed to a first round playoff matchup against the Boston Celtics and Tree was still nursing his bad back. Rollins had 6 points in 12 minutes in Game 1, helping the Magic thump the Celtics by 47 points. But aside from receiving a technical foul after elbowing former teammate Dominique Wilkins in Game 2, he was not seen for much of the rest of the series. In the second round against the Bulls, Rollins' back was still an issue. He only got off the bench in 4 of the 6 games for limited minutes. He blocked 2 shots in the series, but only shot once and grabbed just 1 rebound in 22 total minutes. The Magic advanced to face the Indiana Pacers in the Eastern Conference Finals, and Rollins' role was further reduced to almost exclusively being utilised only on the defensive end. Rollins played 28 minutes across 6 games, and he didn't take a single shot or grab a rebound. He was used to battle against Rick Smiths, Antonio and Dale Davis, and picked up 11 fouls in his court time. Tree is most famously remembered for the closing sequence of Game 4 in Indiana, with Orlando up 1 with 1.3 seconds left, but Shaquille O'Neal and Horace Grant were on the bench after fouling out of the game. Rollins bit on a Rick Smith's pump fake, allowing him to hit the game-winning shot at the buzzer. Luckily, the Magic won the series in 7 games, and Rollins progressed to the NBA Finals for the first time in his 18-year career. Rollins didn't get onto the court in the Finals though, instead giving input from the bench in his assistant coaching role. His inside knowledge from being Hakeem Olajuwon's former backup didn't influence the result though, as the Magic were swept out of the finals 4-0. Rollins turned 40 in the days after the finals, and he declared his playing days over, stating that he was looking forward to developing his coaching career. The Magic signed veteran centre John Konkak to serve as Shaq's new backup, only to have O'Neill break his thumb in the 1995 preseason. 
The question was floated to Rollins as to whether he would once again come out of retirement, but this time he declined, modestly stating that he was happy with where the Magic were now with Concac and Horace Grant, and that there was no need to scrape the bottom of the barrel. Rollins continued in his assistant coaching role with the Magic until 1999, and part of that time he coached alongside Richie Adubato. Rollins had assistant coaching roles with the Washington Wizards and Indiana Pacers, and a one-season NBDL head coaching stint before taking a break from coaching. Adubato moved across to coaching in the WNBA and lured Rollins back onto the bench there with the Washington Mystics. When Adubato was fired, Rollins succeeded him as the head coach, but he was also fired after compiling a 24-28 and record before serving as an assistant coach with the Chicago Sky from 2013 to 2015. In Rollins' 96-game Orlando Magic career, he averaged 1.4 points, two rebounds, and he blocked a total of 71 shots. I hope you enjoyed this look at the magic career of Tree Rollins. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and check back soon for our next episode on the magic career of Anthony Avent.